Welcome into the Action Network podcast presented by BetMGM. I'm your host, Brendan Glasheen. Today's episode, NFL Best Bets Week 3. Joining us this week and throughout the season, familiar voices if you have joined us over the first couple of weeks, Brandon Anderson and Luke Swain, a.k.a. Vegas Refund. We have a rotating third guest. He is familiar with this particular show host of the Touchdown Show on Sundays during the NFL season. Jill Gallant is joining us. We'll also have DeBundo and Niefer uh, throughout the course of the year. Uh, Don't forget you can follow Brandon, Luke, Jill individually in the free award-winning Action Network app for their best bets, as well as bets they give out over the course of the week and during the season. As a reminder, when we do this podcast, we do not consult one another before we make the picks. So, with all the housekeeping uh, in the books, Brandon, I, I, I've got the feeling you're not going to go to these uh, these unders, the hold the, hold your nose unders again this week, <laughs> and we're gonna we're gonna go back to sides. What do you got for your first best bet for week three? Yeah, let's try something new this week. Let's actually win one of the bets I give out. So gone with the unders. Week three is one of my favorite weeks because it is kitchen sink week. So I'm gonna start out with my first bet, and I'll tell you what that means. Give me the Panthers plus six and a half at Seattle going against Seattle Island this week. Kitchen sink is the teams that are down. Oh, and two already basically playing for your life. I've got an article at action network right now. You'll see it on the app of what happens to those own two teams. And basically the answer is bad things happen. If you fall to Oh, and three, one of the last 99 teams that are Oh, and three made the playoffs. So you're basically playing for your life right here. And trends tell us that we want to back these own two teams, even though our hearts and our wallets don't want to back them. They're the terrible teams I keep losing so far. So here's some of the numbers. Since 2010, 0-2 teams, when they're playing someone that's not 0-2, 50-29-1 against the spread, 63%. And that includes 37% ROI if you're taking a road kitchen sink team in the last five years on the money line. So. All three of my picks today are kitchen sink teams. And uh, also, obviously, teams don't quite think of this the way we do. But if you look at teams that are 0-2 against the spread, that's another good spot in week three. So road underdogs that are 0-2 against the spread. Panthers fit here. All three of my picks fit here as well. 48-29-1 ATS, 62%. So what about the Panthers? Who do I actually like here in this side besides all the trends? Because As you said, Brendan, not all trends are winners, as we saw with the unders last week. Mm. So I like the matchup here, too. Panthers defense has been pretty good. They're top five in passing DVOA and defense. I think Carolina's defense probably is the best unit on the field here. They're getting after the quarterback well. Brian Burns did his thing in in the preseason, but he's been on the field and playing really well. And we remember last year, we remember Seattle Island. I know this team pretty well. And I remember betting on Seattle in this game last year when they lost to the Panthers in December, 30 to 17. Geno was sacked three times and threw two interceptions. Why? Because the man can't play against pressure. That has always been true, even as he won comeback player of the year. So if you look back last year, even as Seattle made the playoffs, when they played a defense that was top half the league in DVOA, two and six straight up last year for Seattle, a playoff team. Average loss by almost a touchdown. So Seattle, we forget, still has those tackle issues. They're still missing those guys. I think Brian Burns is going to give some pressure. I think they're going to get after it here and give Carolina a chance. And because I know you're going to ask, Brendan, what about Andy Dalton? What if it's what if it's not Bryce Young? How do we feel then? Guys, I don't know. I think I feel better, right? Like Bryce Young has not been very good. Andy Dalton is career 62% against the spread as an underdog of a touchdown or less. So I'm not sure that's a downgrade. It might even be a slight upgrade. I'll take the Panthers plus six and a half. And with all these bets, the money line and the ROI is good too. So I'm going to sprinkle part of the bet on the plus 245 money line as well. Okay, we're recording on a Thursday and ESPN's Adam Schefter reported that uh, for a second straight day, Bryce Young uh, will not practice due to an ankle injury. And it's uh, Andy Dalton, as Brandon said, tracking to start against the Seattle Seahawks. Let's go to Jill. What do you got? Uh, Pardon me. We'll go to Luke next. Then we'll go to Jill. We'll save uh, Jill for last. Let's go to Luke next. First best bet for week three. Luke. 
So I'm going to go with the Browns currently laying three and a half hosting the Tennessee Titans, which this one was three most of the week. It's gone back to three and a half um, currently, which it's even odds in terms of the juice on the three and a half. So I don't think you need to jump on this one right away. There is a possibility that it might come back down to three, which would, of course, be a lot better than having the hook. But this one, um, it really just comes down to you're just getting – great value on the Browns. They were four and a half, the look ahead and a combination of the Browns offense, not looking great against the Steelers and Chubb being out um, has ticked this all the way down a full point, which is way too much for me where this Titans team on the road at the saints in week one was plus two and a half. And there is no way that the Browns are only a point better than the saints currently. Um, so that that's like the value perspective looking at though. It's only two weeks, the sample size small, but like the Browns are much better than the saints and like more than a point. Uh, and then in this game with Chubb being out, it sucks. He's the best running back in the league, uh, but I don't think this, he would, he's really not a factor in this game. If he was playing the Titans are a pass funnel. No one can run on them. Uh, they're probably their top two or three run defenses in the league. So Chubb, he is a great back. He probably would have got his to an extent. But in terms of the game plan, like Chubb wasn't going to be the X factor of this game, at least in my opinion. And if there is a get right game for Deshaun, it would be this. Interesting. The Titans, the secondary just gets gashed. It is awful. Like it is so bad. And without Nick Chubb, you would expect they're going to be passing more, which if there's a defense for Deshaun, this is it. And then you have Ryan Tannehill on the other side, who is great against really bad defenses, which I wouldn't say he's great, was great last week, but the Chargers defense is not great. And he did, he did well. But against good defenses, which the Browns right now are number one in success rate allowed, he's awful. Um, so I, I really just don't see a lot of scenarios that the Titans come in this spot and win or cover this number. I'd love to have three. Um, so wait for it. If you can find one, get that. But at three and a half, it's just an undervalued Browns team for me. Okay. Might be, uh, as you said, the look ahead was four and a half. So perhaps an overreaction. And I'm always fascinated to see how lines move when that team plays in prime time, whether it be Thursday night or more so Monday night when it's fresh in our minds and it's only a, a few days later. Jill, welcome back to the show. Uh, Jill, again, is the host of the Touchdown Show on Sundays during the season. And to stay on brand, he's going with Touchdown Picks for Best Bets. What's up, Jill? What's up? And, of course, uh, I will kick it up a little bit. We're going to go right to the Falcons game. May not be as bold of a pick as backing Andy Dalton on the road in Seattle, but uh, I do think that this will offer some value for us. We're going to look at Tyler Algier anytime touchdown at plus 185. Very powerful runner. I do think he gets overshadowed by Bijan Robinson, who I don't want to take anything away from. He is fantastic. I just can't get there at plus 105 for an anytime touchdown, especially when Tyler Algier, he may seem like the clear backup, but he has gotten more carries in two games than Bijan. 31 carries to 29. He's third in red zone carries in the NFL with eight. Bijan only has four. And this Lions defense, I'm not really impressed through two games. They gave up two goal line touchdowns to Kenneth Walker last week. And running the ball, this is what the Falcons do. They run the ball on 56% of their offensive snaps. That's first in the NFL, and they're last in the NFL in passing attempts per game. And why would you throw when you have Desmond Ritter at quarterback? So to me, this is a bad line. I would play this anytime touchdown odds to plus 150 for Tyler Algier to score an anytime touchdown. Do you happen to know what, what, what's Bijan's number as of right now? It's plus 105. That's why I'm saying, like, for me, I'm not saying he can't score either, but I think multiple running backs can score in this offense in Arthur Smith's system. And with the way that uh, uh, Bijan is playing and just the way that the carries are being split up, Algiers should be closer to probably around plus 150. Okay, good good stuff. Um, let's go back to Brandon. Second best bet for week three. What do you got? All right, give me the Broncos. Plus six and a half in cool. Miami to face the Dolphins. Jill, you got a pizza handy? You got a frozen pizza nearby with this pick? <laughs> Oh, yeah, you know, we, we got first first Close episode getting the drill back on here. We may as well go back to Broncos. It feels right, guys, doesn't <laughs> it? After all of our Broncos bashing last year. This one for me, this is it's trends bonanza. This is just Denver trends every direction that I can look. 
again, kitchen sink, all the kitchen sink trends I talked about in Carolina, every one of them applies here, but I got some extras. 0-2 teams against the spread, that's Denver right now, that lost by seven or less, 64% against the spread in week three. A couple other week three trends. If you get the home opener like Miami, instinctively you think, hey, all right, Miami's finally got the home game. We got to like them. Home opener teams week three, 36% against the spread. So actually they're underperforming there. Maybe we're overcompensating on it. And then I'm going to back Sean Payton and Russell Wilson. Russ actually looked pretty good here the last last game against Washington for, you know, half of the game, but we'll take it. Got some long balls in there. And then the trends. Russell Wilson, after a loss, 60%. As an underdog, 68% against the spread. Sean Payton, after a loss, 63%. As an underdog, 61%. And remember... Those trends aren't the same. Those are different trends in different locations. So those actually do fit independently here. And then a matchup. Denver's offense, actually pretty solid so far. I'm not going to lie. Better than I thought that they would be. They're third in the NFL in success rate right now. They're, They're moving the ball. They're putting up some points. Pass defense for Denver, pretty talented. Pat Sertain, we got him to possibly help cover those speedy Miami receivers. Justin Simmons at safety. I think Denver can hang here. And then our luck rankings. Miami so far right now is the third luckiest team in the Mm -hmm. NFL, where Denver is the second unluckiest team. So this is a heavy luck ranking pick as well. This is just a case where, I honestly, I like Miami a lot better. I moved them up to third in my power rankings this week, but I think the line's a bit overinflated here. In Denver, in a spot where Sean Payton came in, took the big job. Russell Wilson, you can't go 0 3. You got to throw the kitchen sink at it. So give me Denver plus six and a half. And again, I'll sprinkle the money line plus 235. I will, I will add, and I know we're going to talk about this game some more, but uh, Luke, having been at Gillette Stadium on Sunday night, my, I mean, outside of a Raheem Mostert house call, second half, they were. They were rattled. So if Denver's front seven can get to uh, Tua and company, I don't, I don't mind this as much as it's a hold your nose play with Denver being zero and two. And I think Brandon's right. It's looked a little bit better than what the record indicates. You also like Denver this week. Yeah. So I'm on the Broncos as well at, at plus six and a half. Uh, sprinkle money line, of course. But yeah, a lot, a lot. Brandon stole a lot of my thunder. Or Me? Our thunder, I guess you could say. Um, which. Oh. Yeah, it's just in Waddle. Like, sorry, Waddle is a concern to play Sunday, um, which he's in concussion protocol. He didn't practice today. Uh, tomorrow, if he doesn't practice, it definitely should be. We probably the line's going to start ticking down if he doesn't play because without Waddle, you have Tyreek and Patrick Sertain. Uh, that allows him to focus on Tyreek, which outside of Waddle and Tyreek, like the Dolphins' receiving core really. There's no threats outside of those two. Uh, like they're fantastic both, but when you have probably the best corner in the league on the other side, being able to, I guess you could say, shadow Tyreek, um, as we just saw Christian Gonzalez do uh, last week, like, that is a that is a great recipe. And it, it's just Denver as a dog is a whole different story as Denver as a favorite. When when Denver is a favorite, you can't trust them at margin. But as we saw last week, when they went down, they are playing from behind. They rallied, and Denver's offense is underrated. Russell Wilson gets all the slack, as a lot of it he deserves, but this Denver team is just, I think, getting too much hate from the public in terms of how they're actually performing. And as a dog on the road um, at a Miami team, I agree, at Gillette, they definitely like slowed down. Um, something was figured out, I guess you could say. And, mm-hmm. uh, if Waddle is out, like that is that's huge. Um, so I would love seven, six and a half. If Waddle's out, didn't practice today. You'd expect this thing to go down. At the same time, if he does play, you'll probably be able to get seven. Um, so I'll just take the Broncos at plus six and a half with that zero and two straight up ATS sixty percent trend as well. Bra- Braxton Berrios is their wide out three, who did yeah. have a couple of targets on Sunday night. But I mean, I don't think many people would know that off the top of your off, <laughs> off the top of their head. He's he's become outside of like he's like the receiver version of Ryan Fitzpatrick now in the AFC East. He just he plays everywhere now. He played for the Patriots, he played for the Jets, and now he's Jets. playing for the Dolphins. Um, okay, and Waddle was not at practice Thursday uh, with the concussion, so right. uh, keep an eye on that. And you might want to play it now if you think he's going to be out. To to Luke's point, okay, uh, Jill, 
What do you got for a, a second best bet for week three? Well, before we do that, I just wanted to acknowledge there's a little bit of disrespect here to River Craycraft, who is the <laughs> wide receiver three at the Dolphins, who scored in uh, week one. So now before we get more his way, odds, pardon me. Oh, my, my apologies. Yes, he was 12 to one to score a touchdown. So it's not like he was likely uh, to okay. score a touchdown as opposed Thanks. to the guy we're going to look at here with the Packers and Saints. We're going right to Taysom Hill at plus 240. So he got nine carries uh, last week, racked up about 75 yards. Looked as strong as ever. And backup running back Tony Jones, he did get the touchdowns last week, but Taysom's the reason they got there. Couple big runs to set them up near the goal line. Now starting running back Alvin, uh, Alvin uh, Jamal Williams is out for a couple games, but Alvin Kamara, who was I'm mentioning, he's still suspended. So running back depth, just super weak on that team right now. And uh, Dennis Allen and crew, they're going to probably come up with a few more design runs for Taysom because I'm not sure if anybody has seen Derek Carr in the red zone or in scoring position, but he is awful. Uh, it's just awful to watch him on second and third down or second and third and long and try to make a play. And the Packers defense, pretty strong, much stronger in the secondary, though, weaker against the run. They gave up 210 yards on the ground last week to the Falcons. I have fair odds around plus 180 for Taysom Hill. So if you can get anything over that, I think you got to fire away in this game. He fired a ball in the back of the end zone to Olave, Derek Carr, that probably they should have had it for a touchdown, um, just to be fair. But it's your point. Taysom Hill iced that game, too. He got the first down at the end of the game to seal the deal. So he, he made some big plays in that game for the Saints. It turns out they made, they still kind of need him. And I know, I know our audio producer, uh, David, is just very excited about this pick because he is a Taysom Hill loyalist. And a BYU alum. Even better. Okay, let's go to the last round of picks. Oh, Brandon, good, good God! Is this like this? <laughs> this is your team. This is your team. He's going back to the team. He's been he's been talking about this team now for six weeks. Give it to us. I am. We gotta do it, guys. One more time. I'm gonna sell you on it one more time. Give me the Houston Texans, baby. Plus ten in Jacksonville, facing the Jaguars. Luke's old stadium team. We're going there. We're taking the Texans. <laughs> this is actually. My favorite kitchen sink spot of the week. And I got reinforcements here because you've been listening. Chris Raybon already took Houston, one of his top picks on the six pack. Anthony DeBondo already got Houston in his every picks column that comes out Wednesday. So we're Team Houston this week at Action Network. No longer Texans Island. Look, Texans have been terrible through two weeks. They just have been. The stats have some exciting things about them. I can spin it. But they're 0-2. They've lost badly both games. But I think the key thing here is that's not who the Texans are going forward. It's who the Texans were those two weeks. This team, right after it came out in preseason, was like, okay, all in Texans. The Texans were like, all on to the injury report now. And last week, they played with one offensive line starter. They were missing four dudes. They're missing both safeties and really both backup safeties by the time the game finished up. That's a key position for this D'Amico Ryan's defense with the blitzing. And then part of the whole thing with offense was I like the offensive line. So that's what they've been. Laramie Tunsil, the star tackle, looks like he's going to play this week. I need him out there. Jimmy Ward, the safety that they brought in, their key free agent, looks like he's finally going to debut this week. He hasn't played yet. Need him out there. I think, guys, the injury stuff is starting, starting to trend in the right direction. Now, let me say, it's Thursday. This morning I woke up to great news of that star corner. Derek Stingley has an injured hamstring and is probably going on the IR. Not great, Bob. I don't love it, <laughs> but I have to do the Texans thing again. The line's going to keep getting healthier. The center and right tackle are back soon. Jalen Petrie, the other safety, is back soon. This matchup in particular, focusing on the trenches, Jacksonville's pass rush win rate, which is a real stat, is 31st in the NFL through two weeks. So if I can't have a healthy offensive line, I may as well have Jacksonville being the one rushing the passer because C.J. Stroud has actually been pretty good. He had almost 400 yards last week. He's just not good under pressure. But if Jacksonville can't pressure him, even with the line troubles, I like that. On the flip side, Jacksonville's offense has not been very good, guys. They're bottom of five in a lot of metrics, despite all the hype. Press Taylor calling the plays now, I don't think that's going very well. And I think they have some offensive line issues as well. And the Texans are seventh in pass rush win rate. 
So we can maybe kind of win the trenches battle here and get Trevor under some pressure, protect CJ a little bit. Houston in this rivalry in the division has won nine of the last 10 games. The Houston Texans against literally anyone have won nine of 10. That has to get our attention. <laughs> so I'm doing it again. Texans plus 10. Couple trends for you beyond all the kitchen sink ones. Kitchen sink games that are 0 2 just in division games. 15, 6 and 1. 71% since 2010 against the spread. Division underdogs of 6.5 or more, 61% the first five weeks. And then what I got from Matt Moore in week three. If you are a one and one, favored at home, but coming off a loss like Jacksonville. So basically, you lost last week and we're th- saying, oh, it's a bounce back spot. If you're facing one of those teams, you're 42, 21, and two ATS, 67%. So uh, everything says we're giving Jacksonville too much credit here. I don't know if I can honestly say we're not giving Houston enough credit. Houston has not earned any credit. This is my last Houston credit. I'm going there and I'm going one step further. I got my article up on the 0 2 teams. Who's going to make the playoffs? It's the Houston Texans. 25 to 1 to win the AFC South. That's the win in the money line. Because if they win this, they're going to be tied with Jacksonville at the top of the division, right back in it. Give me the Texans plus 10. Let's go. Holy crap. Okay. Uh, and I will say, I, will I, love, say, it. I, I mean, love it. I love how you're committed to this. Um, if they lose this week, though, we might have to check you next week. <laughs> Trevor Lawrence, by the way, one in three, straight up and against the spread in his career against the Houston Texans. And oh yeah, by the way, Trevor Lawrence so... has a favorite of four or more points, 0-4 ATS. Three of those are against the Texans, and he lost outright all of them. That's another stat for you. So Texans, let's go. No, and I I, I will say that when I was looking at the games, like my first glance, like my my gut reaction picks earlier this week, like when the Texans go to the Jags, it's kind of just like an auto for me, where it's a divisional game and whatever it is, like the Texans, I think they won in Jacksonville last year. Um like when they're really, really bad, but like, they just always, and it's like betting it. I, I hate, there's like nothing behind this other than like knowing that the Texans play the Jags tough every single time in Jacksonville. Okay. What a hell of a final it. pick by Brandon. Uh, okay. Let's go back Very to Luke. Your, your, th- <laughs> your third best bet for week three. What do you got? Yeah. So I'm going to go with the bucks who I think right now are plus five. On Monday Night Football hosting the Eagles, uh, which is just this one is just I'm just going to keep riding the Bucks. Um, they're a team that I thought was underrated going into this season. They've won two in a row. Like the Bears are just absolutely awful. Like they're just it's a, it's a tragedy what they are right now, and um, it's it's tough to say <laughs> go base anything off of them beating the Bears last week, but they still won. Um, and this is an Eagles team that their secondary is just bodies at this point. Like. We saw what Kirk Cousins did to them last week. And it's just in with this secondary and this defense, it's just not a team I can trust to win at margin. As you saw the Vikings cover, or I think, yeah, they covered last week. Um, like at the like almost like a backdoor. And like if this Bucks offensive line can keep the pressure off of Baker, like I do think the Bucks can win. Um like very like I think there's a good possibility they will. Uh, but this Eagles defense, I just don't trust. And like, even the over, I would see. But at plus five, I think it was plus six earlier this week. I still like it. I think they can win. This Eagles defense in the secondary is something that is going to make Baker look a lot better than I think he actually is, as long as this offensive line with Tristan Wirfs, which they've been doing a good job of keeping the pressure off, um, can do against an Eagles defensive line. That is scary. Uh, but at the same time, it's okay. It's possible. So okay. bucks plus five or four and a half. Very, very frustrating uh, beginning to the season. I think if you're an Eagles fan or an Eagles better, because maybe this is just how Sirianni wants to manage it. Cause I, I couldn't figure out what the hell was going on with Bryce Young, um, not Bryce Young, Jalen hurts uh, in terms of how they were using him. Because for a while I'm like, is he hurt? And what do you know? He throws a dime to Devonte Smith uh, down the middle of the field for a touchdown. Um, I bring that up to yeah. say this on extended rest. Jalen Hurts yeah. is six and five straight up, five five and one against the spread. So I, I mean, the the rest doesn't necessarily guarantee anything either. I think is what I'm getting. At. Yeah, 
and I, I do want, also want to say, like, everyone watched the Eagles just gash the Vikings defense, like, yeah. just running for a billion yards last week. And when the Eagles did pass, Hurts looked awful. Um, and that was against Weird. a really – it was against a really bad Vikings secondary. Uh, Hurts just – there was nothing going on in the passing game. And the Bucks defense – is stout against the run. I still, I think their defense is underrated, probably top five or six unit in the league right now. And the Vikings defense is on a whole different like mm-hmm. wavelength than what the Bucks is um, in terms of being worse. So, well, and yeah. J- Jalen Hurts as a passer wasn't really all that necessary in week one against the Patriots because they had the short fields, they had the pick six. So we haven't really right. seen him yet. He had a couple good throws in that Vikings game, but um, I think it's fair to call out because it's weird and maybe they're just managing it. And they're two and zero, so they're fine. Um, but I, I think you're onto something there. All right, Jill, take us home. What do you got? Your final pick, and then we'll get to Brandon's look ahead for Week Four. All right, so we're gonna take it down a notch on the difficulty level here. Take it down to like rookie mode on Madden. <laughs> uh, we're gonna take uh, Jamar Chase uh, to score a touchdown at plus one forty. You want to talk about bounce back teams? This is bounce back player situation here. Uh, four red zone targets in the last game versus the Ravens. Even if Joe Burrow or Browning is going to play, it's probably going to be Burrow at this stage just based on the line movement. But if Burrow's playing, he's still going to look for him early and often. 17 targets through two games, still plays around 98% of the snaps. You're not going to get a wide receiver one very often at plus 140 or better. I would play this down to about plus 120. He had one touchdown, and it was called back. And then T. Higgins, he caught one on the next play. So now they're playing against this Rams defense which has actually been pretty feisty uh, through two weeks. But honestly, this could be just a game where Burrow finally gets his mojo back because the Rams, the one thing that even though they are playing well defensively, they're not getting as much defensive pressure as they would in years past, even though they do still have Aaron Donald. They only have three sacks through two games. Uh, Even versus Seattle, when they blew him out, they couldn't really get to Geno. It was more just forcing bad passes. And uh, fun fact, in his career, Jamar Chase has not gone three games in a row without scoring a touchdown we're on game three <laughs> okay very good and, and i, I think, do think even if even if burrow's out like i feel like when backups come in like they pepper the main guys even more than mm-hmm. uh, the starter would because like the reads are like one or two and that's it we're like burrow is probably on to three or four and read one is usually chase or higgins and he's always going to be read two most likely so Okay, that is a Super Bowl rematch on Monday night. And again, I think uh, I think Jill's right. The, the the fact that the Bengals are now minus three, that got down as short as one and a half. Uh, that's indication that we might see Joe Burrow and not whatever uh, Jake Browning is on uh, Monday night. Gentlemen, they weren't more 0-2. Than- like if they weren't 0-2, like Burrow would definitely not be playing. But like, what was what was the stat? Like zero teams down 0-3, whether it's basketball or NFL, apparently. Uh, like he definitely wouldn't be playing if they were an all in two. I think you're right. Assume. That's a safe assumption. Uh, more memories are made, gents, when you are there for live NFL action. When you need tickets, our friends at Ticketmaster have got you covered as the official marketplace of the NFL. Ticketmaster gives you more ways to find your perfect seat. Their interactive seat map gives you 360 degree previews of your section to make sure you have the best view of those pivotal plays. And if your plans change, Ticketmaster gives you more flexibility to sell or transfer your tickets. Plus, mobile tickets make getting in on game day a breeze. And you can even customize your Ticketmaster app to rep your team's colors. Brandon might be investing in blue and red for uh, the Texans um, at this rate. Find tickets today at Ticketmaster.com slash NFL. I go to Brandon again. Uh, for his look-ahead line for week number four. What do you got? Yeah, this one is all about the key number. Give me the Tampa Bay Buccaneers plus three and a half at the Saints. I think we're going to see this one flip to the other side of the key number. So not a huge line move necessarily, but we want that key. Luke made a great case for Tampa Bay. I think we're going to see them put up a stand. We're seeing a lot of money come in on Tampa this week, Monday night. I don't love the Saints against the Packers, so I do think this one maybe moves that direction. If Tampa wins or even hangs tight against the Eagles, 3-0, and they're not going to be a 3.5-point underdog against the Saints here. So Tampa Bay against New Orleans has won three of the last five. Todd Bowles has done pretty well coaching against the Saints offense. They're down only 18 points a game in that stretch. And the road team has won seven of the last 11 in this division rivalry. So home has not really meant a lot in this matchup. Now. 
they do the Saints do get Alvin Kamara back here, so I don't love mm. that. But I I just don't respect Dennis Allen or Derek Carr's favorites. I'm just going to keep betting against them until they prove otherwise. Here's the numbers after, depending on the number you got, it, it, the the Panthers weird comeback Monday night to cover or at least push the number. Dennis Allen has a favorite now four and ten against the spread, two and seven when it's a four point spread or below like it is here, and in the division one and six as as a division favorite for Dennis Allen against the spread. Derek Carr thirty six percent against the spread. The Saints are good; they're kind of good, right? Like they're fine, and they're gonna have an easy schedule and keep being favored, but they're gonna keep getting my money on the other side because I just I don't see it now. One last thing, total here is 40.5 right now. And I think that probably, probably is going to drop. We got two defensive coaches, right? I don't want Todd Bowles or Dennis Allen coaching my team, but I, all my, I can have them coach my defense. If the total is that low, then three and a half points is a lot. And we got a stat for that here. Underdogs of four or less when the total is 42 or below. Last five years, 81, 47, and two against the spread, 63%. So when we have a really low total like this, you want the underdog because those points are just that much more valuable. And I want the key number. So give me the box plus three and a half. Okay. Excellent. And Brandon's look ahead from last week, he gave out Buffalo, which we'll find out. But from before that, uh, for our first week, he gave out uh, Atlanta and they delivered over the weekend against the Green Bay Packers. So there you go. You get some edges if there, if you look ahead. Uh, That is going to do it for our Action Network podcast, NFL Week 3, Best Bets episode. We are presented by BetMGM. Uh, You can also catch the full betting preview of the NFL card with Raybon and Stucky. They've got their Sunday six-pack also available on the Action Network podcast. We have our weekly recap episode with Jill and Evan Abrams. Uh, They will join you uh, late Sunday night. That comes out first thing Monday morning. Be on the lookout for that. and. We'll join you all next week. Thanks to Joe Gallant, Brandon Anderson, Luke Swain. I'm Brendan Glasheen. Thanks for listening to the Action Network podcast. Good luck this weekend, and we'll talk to you next Thursday. See ya. 